Oh, hi there. It's Kelly Van Washinova from Educational Technology Services here at Denison. Today, I'm going to be showing you a Tuesday tech tip, except I guess today it's a Thursday tech tip. And we're going to be doing what Jeff Kurtz recommended in his video last week, which is creating anonymous surveys for your students to take in order to provide feedback on your classes. All right, so let's get started. Right, Viv? All right. So the easiest way to go ahead and make an anonymous form for your students to fill out is to do that using Google Forms. To get there, I'm going to start in My Denison and then click on this little G in the corner. And in that drop down, these are your Google tools. You will see there is this fancy triangle thing and that's your Google Drive. So if you click there, it will go ahead and open up your Google Drive. All right, and once you're in your Google Drive, there's a new button in the top left. If you click on new, you will see the different new things you can put into your Google Drive. We're going to this more area where this menu expands a bit, and we're going to choose the top one here, which is Google Forms. If you just click that, it's going to go ahead and start you a brand new form right over here. All right, it just opened it in a new tab and it's starting that form for you. So I'm going to put, so something along those lines, I would encourage you to put both the course number uh, and section number and all of that along with your name, just in case students get some of these surveys from multiple faculty members so they know which course they're giving feedback on. Okay, so once you have that top matter filled out, you can add your questions. Uh, and Jeff's suggestion was, what should we stop doing, what should we start doing, and what should we continue doing? So whatever the order you do those in, you could say something like, what should we stop doing in this course? And by default, Google Form just went ahead and decided that paragraph might be the best way to respond to this question, but over here you have different options for the type of question. You could make it short answer instead. I'm just going to leave it as paragraph since that's what it defaulted to. And when I'm ready, I can go ahead and click this plus to add another question. And I'm just going to mirror the questions just changing the words stop, start, and continue. Um, I'm going to add one more question to the bottom and I'm going to say please provide any additional comments or feedback below. All right, can't, ta can't type and talk at the same time. Now you could also click this button here to make any of the questions required and that would force them to answer the question before they could submit. I'm not going to do that for this. Uh, it is an option though in Google Forms. Now, the next thing to know is this, you've put the title here, but if we look to the top left, it just says Untitled Form. Click there and it will automatically pull the title from the form and make that the title that you can search for in your Google Drive should you need to find it. Another thing you can do is up here in the top, you have this little paint palette. If you click there, you can change your colors. You can do a nice green for spring, or I, I really like this teal. Um, you have some different options with colors and font. You could also click choose image, and you can pick a nice image to put at the top that Google has provided. So maybe I do that. Or you could also go to upload and upload your own photo if you would rather do that. Okay. So I'm just going to hit insert to put some photo up at the top. All right, and it did change my theme color, but there we go. Okay, when you're done with the theme, hit the X there. And now we're ready to go ahead and send this form to the students. In order to do that, we need to make sure we have the right settings. So if you see here this little wheel at the top, go ahead and click on your settings. And it's asking in here if you're going to collect email addresses. Since you want the form to be anonymous, don't check that. 
Now, this check here by default is restricted to Denison University um, and its trusted organizations, which is just the Denison community. This means that users will have to be signed in in order to fill out your form. You can uncheck it, but it doesn't matter. You want your students to fill it out. They'll just have to sign in with Denison if that's what you'd like them to do. Okay, hit save there. That looks good to me. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is up here on the send button, if you hit send, this is how you're going to distribute the form. Okay, do not just copy the URL at the top bar. You need to click the send because the URL on the top, do you see the little word edit at the edge? That's because you can make edits to the form there. You don't want to send them that, you want them to fill out the form. So once you click that send, they, you could either type in all their email addresses or the easiest way is to just go to this little link there. You can shorten it, make it a little smaller. And you can copy this link and then just go ahead and paste that right in your notebook bulletin or in an email when you're updating students. Just go ahead and copy that link there. All right. And if students go to that link, this is the form they'll see. Now they can go ahead and put their answers in here, but they can put the answers and then they hit submit and this is what they see on their student side. I'm going to flip back to the form we were editing to show you where the responses go. So now that I filled it out once, I see a one next to my responses and this is that form that I made. This is where I can edit it. It's saved in my Google Drive. So when I click on the responses there, I can see a summary. I could view by question or I could view individual, meaning each submission. You can view it just right in here within the form. The other option would be to click this button to create a spreadsheet. And once you do that, you can actually make a spreadsheet that all of the answers will just flow right over to that spreadsheet. And this will also be in your Google Drive. Both the form and the spreadsheet will be in your Google Drive. And every time a student fills out that form, it will go to the spreadsheet there. All right, one other way you can receive responses is if you click on the three dots, I went back over to my course feedback form. You could also get email notifications so then it would email you directly, okay? And you can turn those on as well. All right, so that was a quick way that you can create an anonymous form to collect feedback from your students per Jeff Kurtz's great advice. Thank you for watching another Tuesday Tech Tip on a Thursday, but let's be honest, do we even know what day it is anymore?